Hello my fellow humans. A decade ago there were discussions about which technology will most likely replace internal combustion engines and fossil fuels in automotive industry. Will this future be battery electric or would it run on hydrogen fuel cells? Most would say hydrogen fuel cells are the future. Because at the time batteries were seen as too unreliable, heavy and expensive for this application. Now after 10 years went by, we see that was not the case. Today, 98% of pure electric vehicles on the road are battery electric, with their numbers still growing exponentially. And on the other side, fuel cell cars are slowly being forgotten. But there still might be a place for hydrogen fuel cell technology in our electric future. First, let's see what happened with fuel cells in automotive industry. The most commonly used design is called proton exchange membrane fuel cell, which are best known for using platinum as a catalyst for both anode and cathode side of the cell. There is a common misconception that because of scarcity and high price of platinum, it was the main bottleneck in PAM fuel cell assembly. But based on Toyota Mirai fuel cell stack, they use only 30 grams or 5 catalytic converters worth of platinum in each car, with a current price of 25 euros per gram. Other reasons for the low adoption rate are the need for a massive network of hydrogen filling stations with their logistics problems of transporting large amounts of highly pressurized hydrogen, and even fuel cells themselves have some degradation issues, which get exacerbated if you have a heavy foot or if you're driving mostly in a city with its stop and go traffic. As it stands right now, battery electric road vehicles are better in almost every category. They have a lower price tag, are more efficient, with cheaper and more convenient charging. And even range is not a problem anymore. Just to clarify, there is no bias against hydrogen fuel cells on my side. They're just not practical and have no economic sense for road application. But there are sectors that would benefit greatly in our push to sustainability, such as rail transport, grid energy storage and shipping. The industry I'm most interested in adopting hydrogen as a power source is sea transportation, and especially cargo shipping. So let's search for a ship on which I can find the most data and is also one of the largest. Maersk Triple E class it is. So is it even possible to convert a beast like this to run purely on hydrogen fuel cells and still make a standard 11,000 nautical miles passage from Europe to Asia? Let's find out. First we'll need some specs for our conversion. Current design for Maersk Triple E has two 30 megawatts or 40,000 horsepower engines that uses 80 to 120 tons of heavy fuel oil per day and has a fuel storage capacity of 14,000 tons. Their average speed is 18 to 19 knots with an efficiency of around 50%, which makes them one of the most efficient internal combustion engines. And for those first time hearing about heavy fuel oil or bunker fuel, it's a byproduct from distillation process in crude oil refining that has three times the density of maple syrup minus the taste and our yearly consumption is 220 million tons. With this amount we could fill Arizona Meteor Crater four times over. Now let's see if this ship can even store the amount of hydrogen that is needed for 11,000 nautical miles or 29 days at sea. Apart from being the main ingredient in an object that is the reason for our existence, hydrogen also has other great and poor properties such as relatively high energy density with 39 kilowatt hours per kilogram, which is three and a half times more than that of heavy fuel oils. However, by being gaseous element, its density at room temperature and sea level pressure is just 0.09 kilograms per cubic meter compared to 980 for heavy fuel oils. And if we want to raise hydrogen feasibility, we need to compress it like most other gases. In this case, to at least 350, but preferably to 700 bars. At that pressure we can store 38 kilograms per cubic meter, which is not ideal, but manageable. The main issue is that pure hydrogen gas is extremely rare on Earth. This is mainly because of phenomenon called atmospheric escape, 
in which light gases, mostly hydrogen and helium, are stripped from our atmosphere by solar winds. But luckily, we're surrounded with hydrogen in the form of water, and with the help from electricity, it can be separated from oxygen. Now let's do a quick calculation of the amount of hydrogen we would need for 60 days at sea. That's 29 days of voyage with 31 days of reserve. We'll use an average heavy fuel oil consumption that is 100 tons per day and divide it with energy density difference. We consume 29.5 tons of hydrogen per day. And as we're using fuel cells in combination with electric motors, we gain at least 10% boost in efficiency. So with this extra efficiency, we lower the consumption to 26.5 tons per day. So with 26.5 tons per day times 60 days, it would consume 1,600 tons or 42,000 cubic meters of hydrogen stored at 700 bar. Current fuel capacity of Maersk Triple E class is around 14,000 cubic meters. And to accommodate compressed hydrogen for this voyage, we would need to at least triple its storage size. Now even with this expansion, it would require only 7% of usable internal volume, as its max capacity is 608,000 cubic meters. Cargo ships truly are enormous. Now that we have taken care of fuel storage, it is time to replace current combustion engines with electric motors and find appropriate fuel cell design to power them. One option for powering our hydrogen cargo ship are before mentioned proton exchange membrane fuel cells, which Toyota is already producing them for their model Mirai. So for this undertaking, we would need at least 530 of their fuel cell stacks with each power output of 114 kilowatts. But as they're not meant to work at full power for long periods of time, we would require another 400 stacks for decreasing the load and for redundancy. However, current lifespan of PEM fuel cell design is up to 5000 hours. After that, they degrade too much for them to be usable for this application. And as cargo ships are at sea for 5000 hours a year, a total replacement would be necessary every year. But luckily we have other fuel cell candidates, such as phosphoric acid, solid acid, solid oxide, alkaline and molten carbonate fuel cells. Out of the listed designs, solid oxide fuel cells are showing most promise. Therefore, we'll use this design and see if it's feasible for our project. But first, a quick summary of its chemical reaction process so we understand how they produce electricity. Oxygen is added on the cathode side of the cell where it is reduced to oxygen ions. These ions then permeate through solid oxide electrolyte to the anode and electrochemically oxidize hydrogen. In this reaction we get two electrons, as well as water and heat. Then there is a part that links cells in series called interconnect, and because of the variating temperatures in a stack, it must be extremely stable to prevent cracks from forming. Due to their high heat tolerance, most parts in solid oxide fuel cells are either ceramics or metal ceramic composites. And to get all desirable traits from each material, they have to operate at temperatures ranging from 600 to 1000 degrees Celsius. Apart from sustainability potential and hydrogen abundance, their advantage is also high energy conversion efficiency, which is currently around 60% and with waste heat recovery system could achieve up to 85. But there are still possibilities for improvement, such as finding proper cell materials and stack architecture suitable for a lifespan of at least 50,000 hours, lowering operational temperature to reduce degradation rate and increase efficiency, and lastly, end product price tag must come down significantly. The latter one can be achieved with economies of scale combined with automation, and because of the eventual closure of coal and nuclear power plants, the need for stationary energy storage, along with renewable energy production, will increase drastically. And to satisfy our energy storage needs, fuel cells will be one of the main options. Disruption will also take place in large-scale transport sectors such as shipping and rail, where battery technology is their only competitor. But due to low energy density of existing batteries, they are currently not feasible. And in regard to lifespan and degradation rate, is a study that came out of Institute of Energy and Climate Research in Uli, Germany. They ran a low test with solid oxide stack for 93,000 hours or 11 years and came to a conclusion that with current technology, a lifetime of at least 60,000 hours can be achieved with low degradation rate 
by properly choosing the stack components and operating parameters. We can conclude that fuel cell technology is already at our disposal. And as a proof of concept, such cargo ship could be built today without drastic changes in current ship design. But for them to become commonplace, there are still engineering challenges and much needed investments. However, first we need to press on our government officials to stop with subsidization of fossil fuels and properly tax polluting industries. After this is accomplished, investments will start pouring for sustainable technologies that are crucial for our future prosperity. Oh, and another fun fact. Such a ship could generate up to 46 gigawatt hours of electricity and 14,000 cubic meters of distilled water. With it we could power 70,000 average homes for two months and fill five and a half Olympic-sized swimming pools. Imagine the possibilities.